Experience the magic. Love will prevail. This summer, crack open a Budweiser and enjoy the refreshing taste of freedom. Grab the taste of freedom this summer with Budweiser's limited edition camel cans in stores now. Hi, I'm Levy Carriker, reporting for Live Magazine TV. I am excited to share a great conversation with Kim Richards, CEO of Allied Artists. Kim has earned more than 100 gold, platinum, and diamond records, as well as many Emmy and Grammy nominations. One of my favorites is Pink Floyd, The Wall. This album has certified diamond at 23 million copies. Let's hear it from Kim. Well, I was working with CBS Records at the time, and I had an opportunity to work with uh, with Pink Floyd. Now, we believed, at that time, we believed The Wall was going to be their last album. It turned out it wasn't, but we believed it was going to be. And so anyway, um, I lobbied to work with them and got the opportunity and really, really enjoyed it. it was the, I have to say it's, it's one of the highlights of my career. in a beer? If it's a Bud Light, it's four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. Welcome to Live Magazine TV. Interviews, Ocello Valley Smiles, cover shoots plus exposure, Saturdays, 3.30 on KPSE. Live Magazine TV brings you Palm Springs Fun. Live Aid was a 1985 benefit concert organized by Bob Gildorf in Mid-Europe to raise relief funds for the famine in Ethiopia. Kim. You worked on that with Queen. He was there, right? Had something to do with it? Yes, Queen was involved. Of course, they were broadcasting from England. And I was in Philadelphia. I actually, it didn't, my involvement wasn't, uh, wasn't because of Queen. Although I had worked with Queen, uh, I, was involved, uh, I was involved in the, in the U.S. and in Philadelphia. But I did get a chance, in a sense, to work with, with Queen because they were broadcasting live, uh, they, they were broadcasting live from London, and we had to, uh, to try to time sync the uh, the incoming signal uh, with Philadelphia's uh, with Philadelphia's broadcast. So, Kim, how did it come about that you worked with Andy Gibb? Ah, well, I've been working with Steely Dan at that uh, the the club called the Sopwith Camel. When I say club it was pretty big, it was, a, it was a fairly large theater that had been turned into a concert hall. And I'd been working with them. They were doing very well uh, on Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, every other week, something along those lines. 
and they had a, a huge hit record come out and they uh, they were no longer going to be working at the Sop with Camels, so I was no longer going to be working with them there. So uh, when they told me, they, they said, but uh, we got good news and bad news. Bad news is we're not going to be here, but the good news is if you want, there's a tour going through Australia. And I said, I want to do it. They said, we haven't even told you who the tour is with. I said, it doesn't matter. I want to go to Australia. So anyhow, it turned out it was with, with Bay City Rollers. Uh, I went through B, uh, I went through Australia uh, doing monitors for the Bay City Rollers and opening up for the Bay City Rollers was Andy Gibb and that's how we met. This buds for the blues, the reds, and the warriors. This buds for the magic, the athletics, the giants, and the jazz. This buds for the trailblazers, the Braves, the Yankees, and the Angels. This buds for the home team. Live Magazine TV with Elizabeth Scarcella. Saturday, 3.30 p.m. on KPSE. in the desert. We recently saw you on YouTube with Donnie Osmond on the Tom Schneider Show. You were talking about the First Amendment rights. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Kim? Well, in the 80s, there was a huge movement to, uh, to start, uh, in essence, raiding records. And there was, a, the, the, was an uh, organization called the PMRC, the Parents Material Resource Center. 
and they were attempting to put warning sig uh, signs on records and to, to create laws to force the industry to have to rate the records. I was vehemently against that. And believe it or not, uh, Donnie, who, is, who had that reputation and still is being squeaky clean, he's also very much in, uh, into the First Amendment and to creative ri uh, rights. So both of us fought, uh, in, in essence, censorship. And we went on to, uh, we went on to Tom Snyder's show. And uh, together we, we fought and argued uh, <laughs> against rating of records. Uh, the industry, as a result, did adopt a voluntary standard so that we, as an industry, were permitted to, to put warning labels on the records we felt were appropriate, but we were not forced to by act of law. That was the goal. Kim Richards, CEO of Allied Artist. Can you tell us how this all started? How did you begin this business? <laughs> well, I actually started at the Greek Theater at 13. I was, uh, I came in as an usher and worked my way uh, into the sound department just by hanging around all the sound guys for a long time. And uh, my family lived above the, Gr the Greek Theater. Uh, Greek Theater is located in Griffith Park in Vermont Canyon. And our home was just above the Greek Theater. I used to sit on this uh, little white wall that overlooked Vermont Canyon and I could hear the likes of Nat King Cole, uh, Judy Garland, Keeley Smith, uh, just some of the uh, fantastic singers of the time. And it drew me to, the, to that theater. I heard that sound, I had to have part of it. So when I was old enough, down the hill I went at 13. Uh, they, I ran across somebody, they, uh, I asked him if I could work there and he kind of looked at me and he says, well, you could be an usher, I guess. I said, does that get me inside? Yes, it does, I'm in. So I uh, started there as an usher and soon worked my way into sound by hanging, out, uh, hanging around all the sound guys. And I was small enough that I could carry the cables uh, from one side of the stage to the other uh, beneath it. And so I, I think I was very useful to them that way. You're watching live magazine TV and we'll be right back. This summer, crack open a Budweiser and enjoy the refreshing taste of freedom. Grab the taste of freedom this summer with Budweiser's limited edition camel cans in stores now. Driving around Palm Springs is beautiful and right in the heart of the Uptown Design District is Trio Restaurant, where friends meet for fun. Brunch a go go Trio Restaurant. Hey Tony, welcome to Trio. We'll go this way. Saturday and Sunday, 10 to three. Hi Forrest. <laughs> Hi, Lexi. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Fresh fruit. We have bottomless champagne or specialty Bloody Marys and homemade chips. Enjoy the pleasures of Uptown Palm Springs. Caesar salad. I added salmon. Try the eggs benedict. I'm having the Harris ranch steak. Mmm, the huevos rancheros are great. And don't forget, dessert. Trio, where Palm Springs eats. Hey guys, Dr. Jeff Olson here. Oh my gosh, I know, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Um, so, you know, I've been working on this for about six years. You always have to go to yeah. Lisa. 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 Lisa.
I've seen something about your career with Steely Dan, your early career. What was that about? Well, I was, uh, again, I was working at the Greek Theater. Uh, this was a few years after I had st a few seasons. Uh, in those days, the seasons were only in the summer, and the an act w stayed there for an entire week. Uh, so this is uh, two or three years after I started uh, working summer, the summers at the Greek Theater. And uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young were uh, headlining uh, that uh, this particular week and I was there and whenever there was a, a band that didn't have a didn't have a sound engineer the opening act the uh, the sound men that worked for the Greek would be able to uh, they would mix for the, for that act and they would let me uh, because I was the young kid on the block and they would stand over my shoulder and let me mix well the opening act happened to be Celia Dan and I mixed for them and became uh, relatively close to them, mixed with them at a place called the Sopwith Camel in, uh, in Glendale. It was a, an old movie theater that had a Sopwith Camel airplane in the, in the center of it, and that's why they called it the Sopwith Camel, and that was how I started uh, working in the industry. Once in a while, people come along in an industry and make big changes. When digital took over vinyl chem, what was going on then, and how were you involved in that? Well, just as was the case with digital downloads, the industry was very reluctant to take on uh, CDs. Now, CDs were the beginning of digital technology, and I was always a big t technology buff. I wanted to have the, new the newest and the greatest uh, equipment, and, uh, and, form of, and certainly anything having to do with recording, I was into that. So I liked digital technology. When it first came in, there were a lot of critics because it would overload in the high end, uh, of the, the high end frequencies would overload on CDs. And sometimes the sound wasn't spectacular in digital. We've, we've mastered that uh, in the meantime, but at that time, there were, some, there were critics of, of uh, CDs. The, but the, the more important critics were saying they didn't want to go to, they didn't want to go to CD technology for fear that it would uh, overtake the vinyl record. I understand that, particularly today, because the vinyl's actually coming, uh, coming back. But uh, I believed at the time that we, if we didn't adopt the CD technology, that the CD technology was going to, uh, was going to uh, take over and we wouldn't be able to stop it, much the same as uh, digital downloads uh, became later on. Uh, later on. So, uh, I was on the RIAA's technology committee. We used to meet at Capitol Records, the famous tower on Vine. And so anyhow, uh, we had a, we had a uh, vote coming up to determine whether we were going to adopt the CD technology or not. And I fought very, very hard to adopt it. And we had uh, some some pretty boisterous arguments about about it. And in the end, it uh, it was adopted, but by only by one vote. And I made a very passionate plea to get that one vote. So uh, we finally did adopt it. football, look good, feel good, play good. The same goes for off the field. It is all about preparation, it's all about practice, the process. The only difference is the uniform that I wear now. A custom suit from Men's Warehouse.
there is nothing like custom. Especially when you need to be camera ready for 15 hours. I've got an athlete's body and it's hard for me to buy suits off the rack. They don't always fit right. A well-fit suit makes all the difference when it comes to confidence. And confidence is everything from pro football, to being a bachelor on TV, to being a sports announcer, and hosting a show. A solid stylist is a lot like a solid producer when it comes to helping me create a suit. Because when you look your best, you feel your best, and you perform your best. I'm Jesse Palmer, welcome to the show. So Kim, how did you get to Allied Artist? And we've heard some new things are happening there. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe some productions or distribution? Uh, to go over to Allied Artists, I uh, came, came over as head of productions for the uh, record division. Record division and film division were two distinctly separate entities. And eventually I moved my way up to, the, to head records. And so my only experience prior to that in terms of motion pictures uh, and television had been uh, had been the, the, the wall, the movie, the wall, and I had done uh, uh, television sound for TV shows such as Fridays and Solid Gold with Andy Gibb uh, and so on. So uh, the motion picture end of the business was in trouble uh, because of their distribution. They had decided to change distribution from distributing into indies. Uh, independent uh, motion picture companies, uh, and they'd gone, uh, they had switched and gone through Warner Brothers, and that basically destroyed their independent distribution model. So anyhow, uh, the com the film division got into trouble. The music division was doing well, and eventually, the music in essence took over the film division, which is how I became uh, positioned to head both, and so. Uh, Films got thrown on my lap, and I and we hadn't we haven't done all that much with it over uh, throughout the years. Well, we've just uh, I shouldn't say just, but we've uh, we've been doing films for a while, but distribution, independent distribution, we've resumed, and we are now in the process of offering independent filmmakers independent distribution that does not cost them an arm and a leg. It's affordable distribution. Thank you for being here with us today, Kim. We really enjoyed the interview. In closing, can you tell us what your plans are for Rocky Kramer? Well, Rocky is a multi-talented artist and we've already got one concept album and a concept album, let me make one some, something clear. When you're talking about a concept album, that's a very complicated piece of music. Each, each piece moves from one into the next song. They, so. Each one of the song, each of the 14 cuts on that album stand on their own, but they can also uh, be listened to continuously from start to finish, and you can barely tell when, they, when it changes from one song to another. In fact, in some instances, you can't tell, uh, but they are separate. On the, so the concept album is much more complicated than your, your typical album. Uh, well, anyhow, Rocky Kramer has a has some 10 to 14 uh, concept albums already written, and uh, we're only on the first one that we're releasing, which is actually the fourth in the series that he's written. So we have a, a lot of material ahead of us. He's got a fantastic uh, music video. It's his debut music music video is just making noise everywhere, uh, racking up. Uh, racking up uh, award nominations and, and praise uh, everywhere. So we were scheduled to release his latest single, which is Alcohol from the Firestorm album, but the pandemic uh, put everything, uh, threw everything in the sky for a moment. And we'll have to figure out where we go as soon as we, we decide whether we've got a vaccine or whether we're gonna be hiding underneath tables. <laughs> hey, did you ever hear from Michelob Ultra? 
I got it? So I'm training for this big role. It's a Michelob Ultra commercial. I'm the spokesman. I am Captain Michelob. I like beer! So sorry. This is yours. And relax. You gotta be fit. You gotta love Michelob Ultra. It's not like anyone else could do this. Name? Pardon? What is your name? Chris Pratt. Over there, bud. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Brunch a go-go from 10 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. The happiest happy hour, 11 to 7 daily. Get a three-course dinner for just $19.99. Trio! We're always happy to see you. Trio, where Palm Springs eats.